The following is a presentation of Major League Baseball Productions. How do you become one with the city you play for? It starts with our passion for playing the game. Passion. You've got to have it to succeed in New York City. It's a very tough city to play in. Boy, is it rewarding if you have success. Most of us are blue-collar people. Blue has always been my favorite color. The orange and blue flows in my veins. We bleed orange and blue. New York fans don't care about the individual statistics. They worry about winning. Ray is speeding the third. What you play for is that late October. The only thing that matters is the World Series. This town is about winning. You got to bring your A game, and you got to win. Just the way we are in New York, you're not hidden. I don't like you right now. You are hidden. I love you. These fans here really demand 100% effort every time you go out there. New York gets so passionate, so fiery. All the way back, here we go. It pumps you up and it gets the adrenaline flowing. It was overwhelming to play in New York and start winning the way we were. David Wright with a walk-off hit! The Mets have done it again! If you play the game high and the right way, you know, they're gonna love you. They want a curtain call. It's really motivating to actually see that response from the fans. There's such a close, knit relationship between the fans and this Met team. And I think that's what continues to motivate us and gets us going. Carlos Beltran in the bottom of the 16th inning. I've never experienced anything like it before in my life. Walk-off fever is alive and well at Shea Stadium. When you look back on it, when you take a deep breath and just realize what we accomplished this year. Wright is hustling towards second, he's in. We had some gamers out there, guys that gave their heart and soul to this team, gave their heart and soul to this team. Play as a team, it's not just about one person on the team. This team had a lot of guts. This team had no fear. We are one of those teams where we never gonna give up. Willie brought that. 2006 National League East Champions. I think we did a tremendous job in pulling together. It didn't matter if the pitching went down, the hitting went down. This team was not going to be denied. The adversity that we overcome, the injuries that we overcome, we came together as a team. Leaping and he made the catch! He made the... They seem to have heart, no give up. So we have fun in the clubhouse, constant laughter and joking around, and I think that's a huge part. The team chemistry is there. It's the chemistry, it's the excitement, they have fun. And it reminds me of 86. The Mets have won the the fans love the 86 Mets. I mean, that's all they talk about around here. So. We're trying to do something, not to change it, but to add on. What a blast by Delgado! A grand slam! Shea Stadium in that place rocks. It literally, you know, shakes and moves, shakes and moves. The Mets have it again. They play an exciting brand of baseball. You can run! <laughs> and Shea Stadium is a place to go. I've never seen this ballpark so excited. This is going to be a show right here. The groundwork for 2006 began two years prior when General Manager Omar Minaya was hired to help bring a winning tradition back to Shea. We've had three bad years and our fans are very demanding fans in New York and we felt like we needed to change the atmosphere. Critical to that goal was hiring a former Met and a proven winner to take the reins as manager. Well, I'm proud to introduce uh, today uh, the 18th manager for the New York Mets, Willie Randolph. When you thought about Willie, you thought about consistency, you thought about a guy that was professional, and at the end of the day, you thought about a guy that was a winner. We want to get us back to winning, and it starts with Willie Randolph. Now, Manaya sought winning players, and he began by signing one of the best pitchers in the game. I'm very thankful and, and very grateful to be part of this new organization. We were fortunate to go out and acquire Pedro Martinez, a guy who's well known throughout the world. Pedro Martinez, one of the all-time greats. You talk about Dominic. He struck him out. The fact that he wanted to be a New York Met for me was very important. The signing was a statement that the Mets meant business. And when they added the most coveted free agent, well, there was no question. It is a very exciting day today to be able to announce the signing. Great runner, a very good defensive player. He made a great catch! Of what we think is one of the best all-around players in baseball. Holy smokes! Tremendous power from both sides of the plate. This guy's an amazing player. 
and Carlos Beltran. I feel proud to be part of the new family, the New York Mets, the new Mets. I call it the new Mets because this organization is going to a different direction. In addition to Beltran, youngsters David Wright and Jose Reyes were ready for the show. And with Martinez joining veteran Tom Glavin in the rotation, a palpable buzz preceded the upcoming season. To be able to get a Carlos Beltran, uh, that really is special and kind of falls in line for us. When you have a Wright, a Reyes, a Beltran, you got a core group of guys that you can build around. As a manager, you're sitting back and you're going, wow, this is awesome. Any manager would just love an opportunity to go out and compete every day, and I think this team is really ready to compete. Part of Willie's blueprint for success was a winning atmosphere, and he set the tone for that right off the bat. Early in spring training in 2005, he said, no music in the clubhouse, no facial hair. Those things on their own are not going to win any games at all. But what he said to them in that way is, everything here is serious. And so the Mets began to turn the corner in 2005, led by Pedro's dazzling year. It was all Pedro, Pedro, Pedro. Another spectacular outing. Playing here with the Mets, uh, it's been all roses so far. And the sprinklers have come on. All right, kids, now it's time to water the grass. Every one of his starts is an event. The fans have responded really well to everything I've, I've done here. This is a big Pedro party right now. They also got a promising season from Wright. All the way back, here we go. David Wright with an opposite field home run. And Reyes showcased his all-around talent. Mets win! Jose Reyes comes through! No question, Willie had the team headed in the right direction. But this was just the beginning. When you come in as a new manager, you want to really just change the whole mindset. You want to change the whole attitude. Obviously, in 2005, we went to lay the groundwork for that, and they were able to respond really quickly. Following the 2005 season, Mets ownership gave Manaya the green light to take the team to the next level. We were learning how to win at first in 05, and we needed some guys to continue to teach some of the young players how to win. First step, a veteran slugger to bolster the lineup. We're very uh, happy and fortunate to be able to have Carlos Delgado with our club today. Carlos Delgado's been one of the most consistent hitters um, throughout his whole career. Carlos Delgado is in fuego. Really looking forward to have some fun and uh, hopefully do some damage. He's an RBI machine, and uh, he's been about as productive as they come. Next, a closer, one who challenges the radar gun. Struck him right out, out of there. We are very happy today to announce the signing of Billy Wagner to the New York Mets. Guy stand on the mound and everybody in the ballpark knows what pitch he's going to throw and he throws it and nobody can hit it. There's no question that the opposing team doesn't want to have to be in a position to try and have to score a run or two to come back against him. I'm excited about the opportunity and not, I'm like everybody else. I expect great things. I love New York. When you address your needs with Billy Wagner or Carlos Delgado, two of the best in the game, that's a nice winner. But the Mets weren't finished, as Minaya added a hard-nosed catcher to provide that something extra. And there's a lot of guys who have sizzle, and there are a lot of guys who are the steak. And Leduc is a lot of both. Oh, my gosh, he caught it! Oh, what a play! He's got an energy about his game that I think is emblematic of what this team is all about. Veterans Julio Franco and Jose Valentin were also brought on board as Omar shrewdly created the chemistry of the team. All these key marquee free agents and trades that we've made have been for great players that are great leaders in the clubhouse, and that's something that I think will be very important just as much on the field this year as off the field. The anticipation was sky high as the Mets stormed New York with their preseason caravan. Today we're starting off our caravan. We worked hard to put a team that's going to excite New York, a team that's going to follow up on what we started last year. I love New York. But at that point, it was still nothing more than promise. And the team's sage veteran put everything in perspective. We got a good ball club. They got all the free agents that they think they need to win it. Now it's up to us. You don't win games on paper. You win games on the field. I think we have a lot of high expectations for ourselves, and there's been a lot of expectations put on us. But the Braves have won, I think, 14 straight. 
So they're the team to beat. To be the best, you have to beat the best. Right now, the Atlanta Braves are the best. And it was a former Atlanta pitcher whom the Mets turned to to get off to a good start. Hit there for a call, strike three. You have three ways to attack a hitter, in and out, up and down, and back and forth. And Tommy's a master at all three of those. And it's all the inside corner, strike three call. As early as April 6th, the fans' enthusiasm was apparent, thanks to Beltran. Beltran drives one to deep left center field. Back goes Soriano looking up, and it's out of here! And the fans want a curtain call. Welcome to 2006, Carlos Beltran. Carlos is healthy, and I think that's a key. And he's showing he's an unbelievable player, and he's an unbelievable talent, and uh, the sky's the limit. As it was, too, for the Mets, who rolled off seven straight wins, playing like a team with title aspirations. Swing and a miss, he struck him out. LaDuca makes the throw down to first, and the ball game is over. Billy Wagner strikes out Todd Pratt to save Pedro Martinez his 200th career victory. The Mets are at 10 and 2 for the first time ever. It's kind of early in April to feel as though you've really established anything, but I think when you have the kind of success the Mets did. Change up, swung on and missed, and there's the 11th strikeout of the game for Tom Glavin. It reinforces what I'm sure they felt all along was that they were a pretty good team. It's a home run! Julio Franco with a pinch hit home run. He's the oldest player to homer in a major league game at 47. It was a storybook start to the season. And as the Mets marched into Atlanta at the end of the month, their performance was opening eyes. Struck him out, and the ball game is over. They've taken the first two games of the series, and the Mets now have a seven-game lead in the National League East on the 29th of April. The Mets win it in 12 innings. The 2006 Mets personified both heart and courage. A sensational catch by Beltron. Determination. Reyes is going to try for third, safe at third. Chemistry. If you don't have fun, uh, you will have tough time. And compassion. This is a franchise that has always fully embraced its hometown. This is a New York team, if there ever was one. Even off the field, their players and management have always been all-stars, contributing their time and talent. Carlos Delgado gives back through his Extra Bases Foundation and by visiting junior high schools as part of the School is Amazing program. Hello. It is satisfying if you can make a difference on somebody that look up to you. Okay. It gives me a lot of joy if I can do that. Thank you. Right here in the glasses. What age did you start playing baseball? Uh, how old are you? I'm 13. 13? I've been playing since I was five years old. I love what I do. Not everybody in this room is going to be a baseball player or a doctor or an engineer, but you know what? You got to have passion for what you do. Whatever you end up doing, do something that you love. This is my Superman outfit. <laughs> huh? What does it say? Remember that. We want to have fun. Carlos Beltran also loves to spend time with kids and hosted a clinic for youngsters from the Harlem RBI program. This means a lot for them, you know, and it's important. And I just enjoy doing it because they always welcome you and they always have fun. Carlos has been amazing. His desire to be involved on a personal level is really exceptional, and you can just watch him with the kids and tell that he means this. I want to try to teach you guys a little bit how to hit. All right, that's good. Maybe how to feel. All right, so. From now on, when you guys play catch, always remember, try to hit your partner in the chest. More important was to just be with them and spend time with them. Nothing is impossible, guys. Everything is possible. If we believe, we can do everything. Let's go Mets! No question, the Mets are a vital part of the fabric of New York. But they always vie for bragging rights with that other New York team, which ratchets up the intensity of the Subway Series. This town is about winning. You gotta win here. And nothing's better than beating the Yankees. Electricity was in the air in the 06 opener as Randy Johnson held a four to nothing lead, but not for long. Beltron hits one to deep left field, forget it. A three run bomb by Beltron to the back of the bullpen. And it's a one run ball game. 
things settled down a bit after that, at least on the field, as Mets pitchers would allow just two runs the rest of the way. Aaron Heilman has been magnificent. Damon strikes out on the changeup. Heilman retires nine in a row. The Mets tied the game at six in the fifth, and so it stayed until the bottom of the ninth. 50 plus thousand will come to their feet, focusing on Mariano Rivera and David Wright with Paul Laduca, the winning run at second. Two on and two out, last of the night, Mets six, Yankees six. Into the air to center field, David going back to the warning track. It's over his head and the Mets win it. David Wright with a walk-off hit in the bottom of the ninth off Mariano Rivera, and the Mets have taken game one from the Yankees, seven to six. David Wright beat Mariano Rivera. That doesn't happen very often. And the Mets win it, seven to six. Put that in your books. And they're all out to congratulate David Wright. They just always felt that they were in every game. They were going to win every game. Not that they did, but they always felt that way. And that's half the battle. The Yankees came from behind to win game two. So it all came down to the pivotal third game. The Mets were loose and that resulted in still another comeback. This one ignited by Carlos Delgado. Two nothing Yankees, last of the fourth. Way back there, Cabrera, it's gone! A three run homer for Delgado. Carlos Delgado gives the Mets a 3-2 lead. And before the packed house at Shea could even take their seats. No doubt about this one. For the picnic area. Out onto the streets of New York. Woo! Four to two, the Mets lead. And the Mets would secure the baseball key to the city when Wagner escaped a ninth inning jam. Put it in the box. The Mets have won the series from the Yankees. And the Mets congratulate each other and at the same time take one deep breath. The final score tonight here at Shea, the New York Mets four, the New York Yankees three. This team had no fear. They were Atlanta who, Philly who. The Mets three games ahead of the Phillies for first place. They look at the possibility of taking the big step and perhaps winning the National League East this year. This year we've been able to win a lot of games coming from behind. And the Phillies have a 6-2 to two lead. You come back, it's a great feeling. The Mets continue to fight uphill. They've been doing it all night. For this team, people do expect that at any given time, if they are behind, that they can retake the lead. Reyes, the tie right at the plate, bottom of the eighth. Drives it to deep right. Our whole team wants to be in that situation with the game online. It seems like everybody finds a way to come through. Our bullpen came in, did a phenomenal job. In the half for a close strike three. The Phillies and Mets battled deep into the night, real deep. 12 of the books at Shea Stadium. We head to the 13th, on to the 14th inning, still tied at eight. Well, the fans have been up and stretching. It is, after all, the 14th inning stretch. How about the 15th inning? That's where we're heading. Then, leading off the home 16th, Carlos Beltran. Playing 16 inning, you know, we were very, very tired. I was, I was hoping just to be able to come through and he won out. Right in the air, a deep right field. Abreu looks up, and we're going home. The Beltran with a home run. Wins it for the Mets in the bottom of the 16th inning with a walk-off home run. Only guy know how bad I wanted to get out of here. You know, I really thank God that I was able to come through right there. He the home run to, walk, you know, to, to go home and at the same time, you know, take the first win out of the series. It was really important for us. One week later, another extra innings classic as Pedro Martinez pitched one of the season's best games. The Mets will do battle with 27-year-old right-hander Brandon Webb. All Webb has done is go 8-0 and to this point. Webb was ultra tough that game. We really didn't have any scoring chances. I mean, it was neat. You could tell probably like in the fifth or sixth inning that Pedro wasn't going to let them score. It was one of those things where he knew Webb was going to be tough and he had to match him, and he did. The 0 2 pitch swing and a miss and a cutter strike three. Eight strikeouts for Pedro, and in the middle of the eighth at Shea, still no score. Webb left after seven, 
Pedro went eight. It stayed scoreless until the 13th, when this masterpiece ended, thanks to an unsung hero. I have a plan, you know, I was just trying to be aggressive. Now it's Chavez with a winning run at third. No score, the Mets trying to win it here at the bottom of the 13th. That's a game winner for Indy Chavez! I knew it. the game is over, <laughs> so that's very, very, very fun. And the Mets post their eighth walk-off win of the year! Send a resounding message to the rest of the National League that the Mets were here to stay, and it proved to themselves that we're really good. Another win in their final at bat. The Mets have done it again. The Mets were winning on the field and bonding off it. Our ball club, I'm gonna be a little biased. I love it, I love our ball club. We have a great group of guys, a lot of fun. Uh, there's a lot of goofing around that goes on in the clubhouse. We have fun in the clubhouse, constant laughter and joking around, and I think that's a huge part. The team chemistry is there, and not only is the talent, and I think that's why we're winning. When you're winning, okay, everything's fine. Fun dances with winning. He can hit and he can dance. It's a lot of joy, there's a lot of smile, but there's a determination uh, to win the game. And that determination was about to become crystal clear. Jose Reyes to the wall, it's gone! It was a 10-game coast-to-coast road trip. Face it! And all the Mets did was tie a franchise record by going 9-1. and one. In there for a call on strike three. That's when they separate themselves from the rest of the league in number and in, in manner in which they played. It's gone, a home run for Carlos Delgado. The Mets won two of three in LA, then sizzled in the desert. Here comes Council, here comes a throw, and the runner is out at the plate. Leading the charge was Beltran, who'd be named National League Player of the Week. Driven deep to right field. And it is gone! Carlos Beltran with his second home run of the game. Offensively, there was no question that the team hit their stride on that road trip. But I also think the balance of the pitching staff opened some eyes. Swung on and missed strike three. Good morning, good afternoon, and good night. A masterful, complete game performance by El Duque. Then they go to Philly, and they blast away the Phillies. Home run, Carlos Beltran. His onslaught continues. The Mets would sweep the Phils to extend their division lead to nine and a half games. And although they would score 78 runs on the 10-game trip, it wasn't just the offense that was carrying this team. Hit hard, great stop by Wright to his backhand side. The second for one, relay to first and a double play. Are you kidding me? I can remember getting into my car after they completed the sweep of the Phillies, and that was the end of that great road trip. I just thought about it for a second and said, there's nobody in this division that can play with them. I mean, this thing was over in the middle of June. But the Mets knew there was a long way to go, especially the veterans. One vet became the first pitcher in the majors to win 10 games, and he did so on a special day. Swing and a miss, he got it. Oh, yeah, that was Father's Day, yeah. It was nice to be the first to get to 10. At my age, that's a good thing. Still another seasoned performer reached a personal milestone, becoming just the 20th pitcher to achieve this feat. And with that, Billy Wagner has notched the 300th save of his Major League career. On the field and in the dugout, the Mets were having a lot of fun, and so were their fans. Oh, you see that they enjoy playing the game, so they're fun to watch because they have fun playing. They love what they're doing, and that translates, I think, to everybody in the stands. There's a lot of young guys in this ball club that have a lot of enthusiasm, a lot of attitude. And when they come to the dugout, they're alive. They want handshake. They're jumping and screaming, and that's fun. Those handshakes became a trademark of the team. And in the clubhouse, still another tradition was born. Nicknames, uh... You know, no one's really blessed me with a, a, a good nickname yet. We call David Wright Hollywood because he thinks he's the best looking thing since sliced bread. David Wright with a curtain ball. If anybody's Hollywood, it's probably Jose Reyes, but he spends a lot more time in front of the mirror than anybody else does. Jose Valentin, we call him the Pink Panthers because he's got the Pink Panther mustache. I hear some fans just say that I got the best mustache in, in baseball. It's fun, I mean, I like it. Delgado, we just call Jimmy because he calls everybody Jimmy. That's a long story, we just still don't understand that. 
Le Duc, I don't know, they call him uh, Captain Red Ass or something like that. Just part of the razzing part, it's part of the thing. When you come in our clubhouse, you can't bring your feelings. Um, we have a good time ripping on each other. And nobody gets mad, nobody takes it personal, and we have fun with it. You look at the additions that the Mets made in 2006, all these guys brought such positive vibes to that clubhouse. I like personality. The guys like Ramon Castro is one of the biggest jokers on the team. Duku has a great sense of humor. And Jose Reyes brings a lot of energy. So we had a nice blend. And I think Jose Reyes' personality has so much to do with the infectious quality of what goes on in that dugout. Jose became known as Mr. Excitement. He kept the team loose and also proved that he could do almost anything. Here's Reyes, and he lines another base hit, his second straight four-hit game. It's always fun to watch Jose lead off an inning. He's spectacular. Um, he can do everything in the game extremely well. He just provides a spark that gets the crowd going and gets the team back in the game. The slide safe at third! No one in baseball runs, hits, and fields with a brighter smile. Well, I mean, the kid's the most exciting player I've ever watched play in both leagues. Look no further than the game in which Jose performed one of the most exciting feats in baseball. And he hits this one to deep right center. And Reyes will easily get to third. And he's just a single away from a cycle. The last thing to do was the, the base seat. No, I never think about it. You know, I just try to go to, to home play and try to put the ball in play. Through the middle, base hit. And Reyes has hit for the cycle. Jose Reyes, the ninth man. And Jose Reyes is getting a standing ovation. Oh, 50,000 people were chanting his name, and it's a neat feeling. That's his first cycle, but I'm sure it's not going to be his last. And I have never seen this ballpark so excited. The love affair at Shea was growing daily, for this was a team Mets fans could embrace. The energy level of New York uh, radiates throughout this clubhouse. And the team returned that passion to the fans with a special performance on Meringue Night. It was apparent from, from day one that this was a very special group of people. There were 25 guys who really, truly got along with each other. It helps to have that mix because, you know, it's a long, long season. And if you don't uh, enjoy each other, it, it can be very trying. As the All-Star break beckoned, there was no question. The 2006 Mets had become one big family. We got some people that can care for each other and we spend some time together. And that's how winning teams and, and good teammates are uh, supposed to be. It's the chemistry that we have, this team that we, we are now, it's, it's something pretty special. When you have that, you start playing for each other. And uh, as corny as it sounds, you start playing for that team on the, on the front of your jersey, not the name on the back. Pittsburgh played host to the All-Star Game, and the Mets were well represented. The Mets had a lot of talent, and I think it was acknowledged. They understood the Mets were the class of the National League in 2006. I can tell you what, I feel like some sort of celebrity. The city rolled out the red carpet for a franchise record six Mets. Last year was special because you get to go with a lot of guys that deserve to go. Having a great year, man. Pedro Martinez missed the game due to injury, but for Reyes, Glavin, Beltran, Leduca, and Wright, it was almost like being home. It was really neat to go with a lot of your teammates, and we had more fun. And the fun really got started when Wright was asked to take part in the home run derby. Let go. We got these, okay? We got these. Let's go. Mm. Let's go, let's go, we got the... One of the leaders of the team with the best record in the National League with 20 homers, third baseman David Wright. Hey, there's some great home run hitters out there, so I'm just gonna try to, you know, sit back and not embarrass myself too much. Well, this is gonna be a show right here. Are you ready for some long ball? They say, we probably gonna win. I say, no, that you're right, he's my man, he's gonna win. David Wright's got 61 career home runs already. What a year he's having. You know, hopefully you just go out there and have fun. I think just laugh, have a good time. Of course, David would need a pitcher. Guess who volunteered? 
It is Paul LaDuca, his teammate, who is throwing batting practice to David Wright. I came up to him, I said, you know, some I'll pitch to you. And he was like, no way. Oh, no, LaDuca wants to throw to me. <laughs> yeah. I said, why not? We'll have some fun. That'd be kind of funny. I said, come on, let's go down the cage. We'll work on it. If Wright does well and LaDuca pitches well, I mean, they'll have a bond forever. I got my VP pitcher warmed up. <laughs> if LaDuca doesn't throw strikes and Wright struggles, LaDuca's never going to hear the end about it. Will Farm. This is tough for the hitters, but the hardest part is for the, for the BP throwers. Oh, this ball is just pounded. Woo! What about Pauli? Good job. Now we're talking. Paul LaDuca is serving up some cookies to his teammate right now. David is putting on his show. This one is way back. Back, 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 back. Oh, and David Wright is in a groove. He's shaking him out like a New York minute. Yes, he is. Paul LaDuca evidently has done a terrific job as a BP pitcher. Here's a line drive, deep left field, gone. Number 16 for David Wright. One of the best rounds in the history of home run derby. Hey, you guys throw it a little bit, but the LaDuca. You're welcome. Let me some again. I was like, oh my God, we got a chance to win this. So we started taking it too serious. Come on, Dookie. Let's go. We maybe tightened up a little bit towards the end. Paul's got his game face on now. Yeah, Paul was serious. I'm, I'm tired. This takes a lot out of you to swing this many times. Man, you look tired, man. What's up? Now David Wright with four in the final round. We'll see. You know, everybody's surprised from the Met Clubhouse that I got out of the first round, so I'm glad to prove all those guys won. He did better than what everyone expected. He put a good show. I think uh, the fans in New York are very proud of him. You're my concession speech. You better second place, so stay happy. Congratulations to both David Wright and Ryan Howard. They put on a tremendous show. That show continued at the actual game when all the Mets got to share in the fun. You start going like that. Later, you won't go like. <laughs> Ryan, say something in Spanish for the ladies, dog. Go ahead and say something for the ladies. Mamacita, que lo fe. Come the second inning, it was time for Wright to hit him for real against one of the year's top pitchers. I'm telling you, this kid is having a first half of the season to be remembered. And all that batting practice from the home run derby was about to pay off. Oh, they're throwing a straight fastball. Here's David Wright, he rips that to the corner, short point, and goodbye, home run! what I say? what I say? That's all, right. David Wright hit a home run in the All-Star game. David Wright, New York Mets. Just go up there, have a nice, uh, you know, easy approach, and you know, got a pitch up that I can handle and uh, put a good swing on it. Uh, you know, good things happen. David Wright in his first career All-Star at bat has Homer to tie the game. Hey, wait for me. Are you that good? No. No? Absolutely not. Lucky. I made up my mind. I was swinging at the first pitch, no matter where it was. <laughs> Thank you, Glav. You keep it up, you're going to be as popular as me one day. <laughs> I can only hope to be half as popular as you, Glav. <laughs> this is pretty exciting. I mean, as a kid, you dream about participating in the home run derby, participating in the All Star game, and get a chance to, you know, do both. And uh, your first bat as an all-star to, to hit a home run, it's like a dream come true. Now it was back to David's other dream, to help the Mets win the World Series. <music> Following the all-star break, the Mets continued to roll. And one day in Chicago, they had an inning for the ages. Tron and, and Floyd to hit grand slams in the same inning. It was a tremendous thing to watch. Goodbye! And everybody's doing it. A two-run home run for David Wright. The Mets have blown the ball game open. I think all it did was just perpetuate the notion that this team could accomplish just about anything. And 11 runs have scored in the inning. Now that has not often happened in the history of baseball. Together as a team, there's a determination you know, to win the game. And, and the team plays as a unit. It's unbelievable. The spot I'm in in the two hole, um, I just need to get on base because something special is going to happen with the guys behind me. Upper deck grand slam, Carlos Beltran. I'll save Valentin with his second grand slam of the year. And the Mets have been grand slam happy since the All Star.
Tom Ray. It's pretty fun watching these guys go out there and do their thing. And it really doesn't matter what the score is. If we're behind, we're still going to win the game. High drive, B7, the Mets win it. Valentin delivers the game winner on the bottom of the 10th. 10 walk-off wins for the New York Mets. But as any Met fan knows, in order to be the top team in the East, you have to eliminate the perennial champs. You always say to yourself, you know, are you going to get to the playoff? And of course, with the Braves being, you know, the division champions for 14 years, you never underestimate them. Swing and a miss, throw to second, out at second base, ball game is over, and the New York Mets have swept the Atlanta Braves. When the Mets finally put the Braves away at Turner Field, they have driven the Braves 15 games out of first place. You knew that the Braves were dead and that the Mets were easily going to win the division. But the baseball season is a marathon, and the Mets hit a bump in the road when injuries struck the team. At a point in the season, we had Tom Glavin, Pedro Martinez, and uh, El Duque all out at the same time. And we had guys like Dave Williams, Mike Pelfrey, John Main step up and get the job done. He struck it out. That makes 23 consecutive shutout innings for young John Main. And while the starters did their part, the Mets bullpen emerged as the best in the National League. Swing and miss it. Put it the books. The water Sanchez has struck out the side in the ninth inning. But the bullpen was also dealt a blow when a taxi cab accident ended the season for Sanchez. It's the most significant thing that happened off the field all year. They lost Rainer Sanchez. It messed up the bullpen sequence. It prompted Omar to go trade for another relief pitcher. We went out and traded Xavier Nady for Roberto Hernandez and Oliver Perez. After getting the two new pitchers, Omar also added Guillermo Mota. Then Sean Green to stabilize the outfield. The barrage of late season injuries forced the Mets to further tweak the lineup to fill the void. I knew that if we had injuries that these guys would step in. It's part of making the players feel that although there might be backup players, that they could play every day for most teams and, and definitely have the confidence in them to play for my team. It really doesn't offer any excuses. If you have injuries, you win despite the injuries. This team was not going to be denied. It didn't matter if the pitching went down, the hitting went down, they were going to find a way to win. I think winning's contagious, and when these guys get a chance to prove themselves, they see what's going on here, they see the kind of season we have, they see the kind of team camaraderie we have, and they just want to step up and get the job done. And the Mets best illustrated this never-say-die attitude during a memorable August game against the Cardinals. Deep right field, it's going to be a grand slam! Carlos Delgado with his 400th career home run! Delgado not only hit his 400th home run, but as a grand slam to get him back into the game. And the thing I remember was that for the first time since I stopped playing, the Mets had been so great at this all year that they even gave me the feeling that, you know what, they're going to win this game. Delgado's 400th was more than a milestone. It also led to another amazing ninth inning comeback, one topped off by Beltran. Carlos Beltran waiting on deck. Carlos Beltran is big one, one of the main contributors, especially late in games. He just has that knack to relax, take a deep breath, and get the job done. The tying run is on. Now Beltran represents the winning run at home plate. Nothing really fears him, you know what I mean? He's just cool. Bottom of the nine, you know, down by one, two outs. You know, I can do this. He will take the deep right. The ball is out of here! Out of here! He had that feeling when Beltran got up there. He's going to hit this home run. He's going to do it. And, and he did. And he, you know, he's done it all season. It was, it was awesome. Carlos Beltran into the bullpen in right field. And the Mets win it. You win in New York. Um, that's what it's all about. It's the ultimate high. It's the ultimate adrenaline rush. New York fans just have a passion and energy for baseball that I've never seen before. And it's fun to be a part of that. With heroics taking place almost every day, the Mets and their fans had reason to celebrate. A sensational catch by Beltran! That's a game winner for Indy Chavez! Ten walk-off wins for the New York Mets! There was a sense of excitement in the air, a feeling that reminded Mets fans of World Series glory two decades prior. And the New York Mets have won the 1986 National League pennant. Here comes 
So it was only fitting that in the midst of this promising season, the Mets would pay tribute to that championship team. We're here to honor a group of ball players that activated New York City and dominated the baseball world. Beyond their talent, the 86 Mets were a team of boundless personality, with each member leaving an indelible mark on the fans. There were so many different players to root for. You could root for the pitching staff, Gary Carter, Keith Hernandez and his flair at first base. Daryl Strawberry and Dwight Gooden because of their promise. And this was the chance to celebrate them all. You know him as Hojo, third baseman. It was pretty amazing because this is the first time we could say hello to the fans. They had all the players walk through the stands until they got on the field. And the high fives and the back slapping on the way down, well, I'll never forget that as long as I live. They call them El Sid, Sid Fernandez. Come any tougher than the man they call Nails, Lenny Maxtra, number 47, reliever Jesse Orozco. He's still the team's all-time leader in triples stolen bases. Number one, Mookie Wilson. Hello, New York! We'd like to thank you for this great day of recognition. He brought a winning attitude and a deadly bat to the New York lineup. The incomparable first baseman, Keith Hernandez. He delivered the game-winning single in game five of the LCS. Second hit of the series, and the Mets win the ball game in 12, 2 to 1. One of the greatest catchers to ever play the game, number eight, Hall of Famer, Gary Carter. It is a fabulous day to be a Met. Look at this crowd. One of the greatest players ever to wear the blue and orange, number was a phenomenal night in every respect to be able to see the expressions on each of their faces as they came out onto the field and were afforded that kind of reception was priceless. Ladies and gentlemen, your 1986 world champion, New York Mets. It was impossible not to think about the parallels between the 86 squad and the team of the present. It was almost as if a symbolic torch was being passed. They have a lot of similarities as far as the speed, the excitement. A sensational catch by Beltron. Mitchell back to the fence. He jumps and makes a play. Backman and Dykstra were so much fun setting the table for Gary Carter and Keith Hernandez and Kevin Mitchell to see Jose Reyes and the Leduc at number two, and uh, David Wright running the bases to me. It looks and feels just like that team. The one thing with this team also, you never feel like you're out of a game. A few years back, if we were down two, three runs, it was time to turn the TV off. This year, you never know what's gonna happen. They always seem to come back, just like 86. David Wright with his third walk-off hit of the season. Just seeing the chemistry that they had and the excitement that they had, it pumps you up and it gets the adrenaline flowing because you know we say to ourselves that that could be us. The center field and deep. Inspired by their predecessors, the 2006 Mets set out to maintain their Eastern Division lead as they entered the final month of the season. A head first slide inside the park home run for Jose Reyes. Wow, was he flying around the bases. And now, precisely 2,843 games since they had last won the division, the Mets were on the verge of bringing the title back to New York. Fans have been waiting all year for this inning. When you have a division that's been dominated by the Atlanta Braves for 14 straight division titles, you don't write anything in stone until it actually happens. It was pretty obvious from early on that the Mets were the favorites to win the division. The Mets have led the National League East virtually wire to wire. You might think it's hard to really get into it when you're 12 games ahead, 15 games ahead, but man, it is fun to watch a team win night after night. You prepare for this your whole life. I do believe 
believe that if you get along well uh, in the clubhouse, and it's going to reflect that in the field. And we feel that we have real good chemistry, and that's one of the reasons why we have fun here in the field. The manner in which the Mets did it, to be able to beat the Braves in Atlanta on a consistent basis, while most of the players hadn't been there through all of the misery that the fans had suffered, it meant everything to Mets fans to put the Braves away. Everybody is celebrating in their own way. The players out on the field and the fans in the stands. It was nothing like finishing first. It's a 162-game season, and the wild card provides you a safety net. But the energy that night when they clinched the National League East far surpassed anything that, that we felt in the stands when they clinched the two wild card spots that they did. Smiles about all around from David Wright to Jose Reyes to Paul LaDuca. That was an amazing feeling. It was probably one of the best feelings I've ever experienced in sports and since I've been in baseball. This is something that you don't see in every ball club. This has been a special year for us. It's been fun. <laughs> I love to be able to get players to this moment. When I look at my guys and the way they work hard for me, it's very, very gratifying to know that they got a taste of this level right now. Now we want to take them to a higher level. So Shea Stadium was now the place to be, home to the playoffs for the first time since 2000, and the fans were on fire. Oh, it's going to be crazy inside. It's going to be like 60,000 friends getting together for a big party. Let's go Mets! Hoo! Let's go Mets! Hoo! Let's go Mets! Hoo! But the party would be missing one of its hosts, with Pedro lost for the year. The Mets were also without Orlando Hernandez. El Duque not on the playoff roster for this series and his availability in doubt for the entire postseason. It was, come on, you know, what else is going to go wrong? We have limited pitching and now we just lost the guy who's going to start the first game. So Willie needed a replacement, and the choice was somewhat of a surprise. 25-year-old rookie John May takes the mound. I challenged John all year long. I mean, he stepped up and did a tremendous job for us on the stretch. Where there's a crisis, there's an opportunity, and a big opportunity for John May today. When you show confidence in a player, I think, and they really want it bad enough, I had a feeling that Johnny would step up and give us a quality start. In just his second inning, May got into trouble. But the Dodgers and LaDuca bailed him out not once, but twice. Hit in the air off the fist down the right field line. Back towards the wall. It's off the base of the wall. Kent got a slow start. Now he rounds third coming home. Valentin's really turned the plate to slide. He is out. And now they've got the runner behind him coming in and threw his hand out. How about that? When I tagged the first guy, I was waiting for the umpire to give me the out call. And if you really look at the, at the replay, you could tell I didn't know he was coming, the second guy. So sort of got a little lucky. Jeff Kent and J.D. Drew running right behind each other are both tagged out of the plate by Paul LaDuca. It was a huge play to get out of that inning. It sort of broke the ice for our whole team and got our momentum. The Mets fed off that play to take a 4-1 to lead, though the Dodgers came back to tie it in the seventh. But Carlos was having quite a playoff debut. Was swinging a sharply hit ball in the left center of base hit. Reyes in to score. It's another hit for Delgado, who's four for four, and the Mets lead five to four. He's been a tremendous performer and hitter all of his career, and it's nice to see him finally get an opportunity to be in this type of stage and, uh, and come through in his first game. Boy, is Carlos Delgado pumped. Here was a guy who understood what his responsibility was and what his opportunity was and grabbed hold of it and, and made the most of it. And once Carlos did his part, Another first-year Met shut the door. The New York Mets have taken the opener of this division series from the Dodgers. It's still one day at a time. You still don't, don't get ahead of yourself. You just know that you got that first one. Now you want to build momentum and keep going. A much more seasoned playoff pitcher took the mound in game two. On the outside corner, called strike three. J.D. Drew was frozen. I just knew in the first couple innings that he was going to be good. He threw every pitch where he wanted to. He had unbelievable composure and made some great pitches when he had to. That night, he was so good, and he just wouldn't give in. Tom Glavin has turned in six shutout innings. Glavin was brilliant, and Wagner secured the 4-1 to victory and a two games to none lead.
we've taken care of our business here and, and done what we needed to do and, and give ourselves a, a 2 nothing advantage going out west. The more we can keep grinding it out and try and get this thing over as quickly as possible, then the better off we're going to be. The Mets started out fine, scoring early and often, but the Dodgers did not go away quietly. Jeff Kent hits it into the pavilion in left field for a two-run homer, and this game is tied 4-4. Four four. Down by a run, the Mets would answer right back in the sixth. Fly drive, beats it, going into center field. Here comes Green around third. Lofton's throw to the plate, cut off by Loney. The game is tied. Looped in the air behind, shortstop for call back, can't get it, base hit. Here's Tucker around third, heading home. The throw by Anderson, not in time. The Mets take the lead. How about that piece of hitting by Mr. Laduca? They'd add two more runs, making the ninth simply a formality. In the air, down the right field line, Green in the corner, he's got room. And the New York Mets, for the first time since 2000, will advance to the National League Championship Series. They have swept the Dodgers three games to none. Every guy's chipping in. This team has been down and out. With El Duque and Pedro went down, we bounced back, and that's a great ball club. Now the Mets faced a St. Louis team that had barely made it into the playoffs. It was a challenge Randolph embraced. This is something that I've uh, waited for for a long time, personally. And to see these guys uh, come together the way they have has just been very re rewarding for me. But we have a long way to go, and we're looking forward to the challenges in front of us. Glavin blanked the cards through seven, on his way to his 14th postseason win, second all time. The offense was led by a Cardinals killer who began his reign of Redbird terror in 2004. Beltran has murdered Gardner pitching. Different team, different year, same result. That is a bomb right. Forget it! That is long gone! Off the scoreboard in right field! A two-run homer for Carlos Beltran! I was trying to see the ball hit the ball. I mean, I wasn't looking for any pitch, and he threw me a fastball right in the middle of the plate. When I hit it, uh, I know it was going to be out of the ballpark. And Beltran picks up where he left off against the Cardinals in 2004. Two to nothing, New York. I just feel happy that I was able to come through in that particular bat, and uh, we were able to take the first game out of the series. The Mets win game one as they defeat the Cardinals two to nothing. But the Cardinals would win games two and three, giving them a two to one series lead. Still, Willie remained confident. We've been in tougher spots than this. Uh, things can change real, real quick, so we'll, we'll, we'll get some rest tonight and um, guarantee you we'll be ready to play tomorrow. And that's precisely what happened. A home run for Carlos Beltran. David Wright with the second home run of the inning for New York. A three-run homer for Carlos Delgado. And the route is on. It is 11 to 3. The New York Mets have evened up the National League Championship Series at two games apiece as they crush the Cardinals 12 to 5. But in the pivotal fifth game, the Cardinals prevail and snatch the momentum right back. The St. Louis Cardinals are one win away from going to the World Series. So the Mets return to Shea with one thing, one game on their mind. We don't win today, we won't be thinking about tomorrow. So everyone will be ready to go and uh, we'll try to do whatever it takes to win the ball game. John Main was summoned to keep the flame burning, but he'd need some help. Aside from the two Carlos, is Beltran and Delgado, no other offensive player has really stepped to the forefront. If this Mets team wants to get to that next level, which is the World Series, other offensive players have to come up big. It didn't take long for that request to be answered. For just as he had all season long, Reyes provided the spark. Driven in the air to right field, pretty deep. Encarnacion back at the wall. It is gone. A home run. Jose Reyes takes Carpenter deep. And the Mets have a one to nothing lead. Maine was solid, pitching five and one third shutout innings. And the series was tied. The New York Mets will play a game seven. Well, the Mets 
Mets won last night with it backs up against the wall to force tonight. I feel real comfortable in this environment. I love the competition. I love the pressure. And I don't feel nervous. I feel really like I have to kind of calm down a little bit because I'm really excited. And that energy was fueled by the fans. We're going to be amped up. We've been here for six hours already. We're ready to play ball. When 56,000 screaming New Yorkers come out, they just have so much energy, passion, excitement. You can hear the deafening noise here at the ballpark. Fans now think that they're part of the game. They think they can intimidate, and they can. These fans are revved up for game seven. It really was a tenth man out there. It provided us with a lot of adrenaline, and I think a lot of that rubbed off on the players. Enough to take an early one to nothing lead. But St. Louis tied it, and so it stayed into the sixth when Oliver Perez walked Jim Edmonds with one out. Up came Scott Rowland, and what happened next will forever be a part of Mets playoff lore. And Perez deals, fastball hit in the air to left field, that's deep. I remember when Rowland hit the ball, I put my head down and I was like, oh no, it's got a chance. Back goes Chavez, back near the wall, leaping and... He makes the catch, and you immediately say, this is a great catch. He didn't time it the way guys do. They'll go back to the wall, and they'll wait, they'll wait. They'll put a foot up on the wall, and they'll catch it. He just ran like hell, put his glove up, and caught it. And the impact of it is he saved an automatic two runs. A miraculous play by Andy Chavez. Have you ever seen better? When Chavez made that great catch in left field, everybody said, they're done. We're going to win this ball game. But all that momentum disappeared when Yadier Molina hit a two-run homer in the ninth. The situation looked bleak. Then, in their half, these resilient Mets loaded the bases. But it was simply not meant to be. I made sure I stood out there and watched them celebrate, just because you can get that in the back of your mind and get going for next year. It was a great series. And one of the things that makes great series is that you feel bad for the team that has to go home. As much as it hurt, to, to lose that game seven and not advance to the World Series. When you look back on it, I'm very proud of, of everything this team did this year and what we accomplished. It's the step in the direction that we want to go. What a wonderful play by David Wright. There were seasons that ended better than 2006's season did that I did not find as enjoyable overall as this season was. I'll always cherish the 2006 season, especially with the hope that there are even better times ahead. Although the magical 2006 season had come to an end, some of the Mets continued on to Japan for a November exhibition series. Although it was 7,000 miles from Shea, it was a good way to ease the pain. It was a good season, but the ending, you know, we come up short. It was hurt to lose that way, but the guys that are here, you know, this is a good experience so they can forget about what happened at home and enjoy ourselves. Yeah, 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 yeah. Woo! That's what I'm talking about. Jose Reyes, David Wright, and John Main represented the Mets on a major league all-star team that squared off against their Japanese counterparts. Hey, no, 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 hey, over here. <laughs> yeah, yeah, thank you. Thank you. Arigato. You heard my Japanese? Ooh. Wow. They were joined by Julio Franco, who served as hitting coach, and Mets third base coach, Manny Acton. You gotta go hard! Although it's an exhibition game, you're trying to win. I mean, those competitive juices get going. You want to go in there and do well. Your team the starting member to high touch or stay at ground enough. Wow, how many grandpas are going to hit to you? That's not a view. You're representing Major League Baseball. You know, putting this jersey on, you're representing the New York Mets. Uh, you know, we're a team out there. Woo! He said, he said, what? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we're having a good time. We're laughing, joking around. But, you know, also we want to win. There's a lot of uh, pride that, that goes into these games. Now you're ready. Wright was certainly ready when he stepped to the plate in the ninth inning of the very first game. Down by two, David tied it with one swing. I think the biggest thing is you, you have to want to be in that situation. You have to want the bat to be in your hands, you know, late in the game like that. Oh, yeah! And in the finale, 
Jose displayed some heroics of his own. Here we go, Jose! It'd be nice to see him hit a triple right here. Oh! Reyes hits one to deep right field. This ball is gone! Beautiful! Jose Reyes! A two-run walk-off game-winning home run! How about them Mets? How about them Mets? He rifled that ball. <laughs> First team to sweep, part of history. The Mets' dynamic duo helped the All-Stars complete a five-game sweep, reminding us once again that they were the cornerstone of the Mets' success in 2006 and will be in the years to come. And so, having finished just one game short of the World Series, the Mets enter the 2007 season with one goal in mind. 2006 was nice. It's been a great story 20 years after the last championship. But they have the kind of team that's ready to wear the crown. There'll be great expectation. I think Mets fans all over expect the Mets to be in the World Series again. We have a great team. And next year, it will be a better year. I'm excited because the next seasons to come here in New York are going to be winning seasons. Um, we're going to have plenty more chances. I just feel a good about the progress this team is making moving forward. The chemistry is there. The commitment to winning from top to bottom is there. At the end of the day, the expectations are hopefully that this team is going to hopefully get to the playoffs first and win a World Series. You know, we got a great nucleus coming back next year, so if we can stay healthy and go out there and play the way that we're capable of, I don't see why we can't advance to the World Series next year and, and win a ring. For a team that's built to win now, and that's looking to add what may be that final piece of the puzzle, they are still set up to be very successful for a very, very long time. And of course, the Mets and their fans will welcome a new home when City Field opens in 2009. You know, once they get the new ballpark, I'm sure it's going to be even more exciting. And I would think that the players on this team would love to get a championship uh, banner and make sure when they move into City Field that they're able to plant that in the new field. The bottom line is that we feel good about ourselves and we know going to next year that we have some unfinished business to take care of. Unfinished business. We have some unfinished business. We have some unfinished business. Watch out, guys. <laughs> Global surviving. Watch out!